we will be learning most important thing in AI using the cutting edge tools and it's understanding what happens in the neural network. This is way more important than just reading random ideas or research papers. We can read research papers, but the most important thing is understanding uh, how the neural networks work and trying to uh, first understand and then build the next thing. Because Ilya Satskever, the best AI researcher or one of the best said that understanding current ideas is way more important than trying to come up with new ideas without understanding current ideas. And so by understanding current ideas, we will uh, get better research and invent new things. Look at this small neural network. It's very short, very short. And first we will understand it and then we will uh, go further in understanding it. We initialize weights W1 with some random integer of going from input size to hidden size and then the second set of weights from hidden size to output size. We will scale them down to avoid problems with too large weights, which can, which can make saturation, uh, cause saturation of the sigmoid function, which can in turn cause, cause a vanishing gradient problem and very slow. So we want numbers to be uh, between zero and one, but in this middle range, not too close to zero or too close to one, because there is no much signal then and the learning is slow. So this is the sigmoid function, one over one plus e to minus x. You see how it goes from zero to one. So we have that formula here, sigmoid function, and in the end, we will get these predictions like very close to zero or very close to one. We will have these inputs, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So for zero, zero, if these two are same, we want zero as the output. And if they are different, we want one as the output. So the input size is two because we're, have, we're gonna have a pair of two uh, inputs and then hidden size is four. So it can, neural network can uh, process, use that hidden size, middle size to process these inputs and to convert them to the output size one. So we will be understanding what it does in this hidden size mainly and in the weights that lead to this hidden size and that, to lead, that lead to the output. And we need to understand that and then we're gonna become really good at this and then we will be able to invent new things and accelerate the field and write good research. And these fundamental things are most important, way more important than like the latest research paper or whatever. You need to master this if you wanna be the top AI researcher and actually contribute to the field. So our neural network is very simple. We start by doing dot product between input and weights and then pass once through sigmoid so we have this activation and then uh, we do the inner dimension times uh, second set of weights that's going to give us the output z2 and then we pass through sigmoid again and then we just return the result and that's going to be our prediction which will be either close to zero or close to one and just a quick back propagation so we have error to be the our predicted no no it's the true minus our predicted so that's the error and so we have this back propagation you can check out this video back propagation from scratch on my channel so i will just go quickly here over it so first we will compute a gradient of the loss with respect to the to these w2 weights so if we change w2 weights how does the loss change i made it simpler to understand okay so we need to calculate uh, the gradient of the loss, which is this error with respect to how Z2 changes, with respect to Z2, sorry. So that's gonna be just this um, Y minus A2, which is this error. So it's Y minus output, Y minus A2 times the gradient, the derivative of the sigmoid, because we pass Z2 through sigmoid. So it's error, as I said, times the derivative of the sigmoid, which is this one. So we have four hidden neurons. So we have two inputs, four hidden and one output. And we can see, okay, this is one of the neurons, this uh, top row. And red means low activation. So it's almost, maybe it's zero. So it looks like for all of the input variations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, this neuron is outputting zero for 
these three activations, except for this 0 0.4, uh, except for this 0, 0 input, where it out outputs maybe 0 0.5 activations. So all four neurons output 0 0.5, the hidden neurons, hidden neurons output 0 0.5, have 0 0.5 value if the output is, if the input is 0, 0. If we look at this neuron, it looks like this second one depends on the first input here. No, 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 sorry, sorry. The second input. Because when the second input is one, it's gonna fire close to one, high value. Otherwise, when it's one, zero, it's gonna fire very low value. So this second neuron uh, is firing based on the second input variable. And then this neuron is based on the first value here. One, one is gonna output low. And if it's zero, it's gonna output high. And then for some reason, this is always yellow. And then the last neuron is a bit weird. So this is still lower value here and lower here. So I guess this also fires on the second input. And then on this first input, it has, if its second input is zero, then it has high output. If second input is one, then it has lower output. Now I will just make two hidden neurons. Let's see what happens then. So now we can see that this first neuron, this could be detecting that second input bit is one. So it activates here and it activates uh, a bit more here than if second is zero. But again, we have all yellow for zero, zero, which is very weird and interesting to me, like why? So the way I understand this, if both of the neurons activate very high value, then uh, the neural network knows that the input is one, uh, zero, one, so it will produce appropriate output, very low value in both corresponds to this. And then we have this uniform value and this high and low here combination. So those are the four combinations that neural network learned to have to distinguish between these. And now I set hidden layers to 10, just to see if this zero zero gets always uni uniform distribution, which is so weird. I don't know why it always gets this uniform distribution, but it seems like it does. Okay, so it looks like we figured out. This is because we are multiplying weights, both of the weights with zero. So activation only depends on the bias that we have, whatever it is, so not on weights. I think this is a situation where you have input numbers mess with the neural network. This same thing happens in, for example, exploding gradients, where you have like huge numbers messing with neural network and uh, exponential growth and stuff. So I think you should not have like zeros in your inputs. Maybe we, um, maybe we can map uh, like these inputs to like some actual other numbers like two, three. And then we use like these numbers two, three in the neural network. And then later we map them back to like zero, 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 one, this XOR uh, gate because using uh, zeros as inputs directly in neural network can mess with the neural network. So we should just map zeros maybe to different numbers. Now I wanna see if we will get same colors if we run the same neural network again. Uh, so if we see here mostly red, we have two of these blue here, for example. And if I run the same neural network again, We have different colors, yeah, randomness. Randomness in the neural network, but it learned how to classify this. One thing I forgot to add, we don't actually have bias in our network. So we have the sigmoid function. So we get the multiplying with weights to be zero and then sigmoid of zero, 0 0.5. So that's why we were getting before uh, all yellows at zero, zero. However, now we're getting 0 0.5 for some reason. So this is so weird. Oh, okay, okay. It's just because now we have rescaled here. So it's still 0 0.5. It's just, uh, this is the maximum. So our scale is rescaled. 
So, how does it distinguish between 0 and 1 and 1 and 0? Because it looks the same. Do, let me see. Okay, so it undertrained a little bit here. So if I increase number of epochs, maybe, to 5,000, it's going to take a bit more time, but it should. How does this distinguish between these two now? Uh, let me see. It undertrained. Maybe there is just not enough neurons because we have just two in the hidden state. We have two neurons. Can we represent four states with two neurons? I think so, because we have different activations here. It says here the issue is that we don't have bias, so it cannot shift or something, I'm not sure. But three neurons is enough. So it learned... Uh, so for example, this one will fire always slow i don't know why okay so this one learned to fire always slow and we can ignore this yellow because this is issue with our like multiplying with zero inputs okay so this one will fire always low and this one will fire high if first int digit is one and then this one is kind of weird we also need to be aware of this issue with multiplying with zero Okay, so this neuron is 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or 0 0.3, yeah. And this uh, weight value from hidden to outputs are big because sigmoid needs big numbers to put uh, the, re the result when it passes to sigmoid towards 0 or towards 1. And we can also see neuron contributions to the output. So, for example, this neuron, the first neuron, is contributing... Uh, a lot for the zero zero and for one zero and also for the last one 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 so you see these are the green is big numbers and red is low numbers minus 7.5 and green is plus 10 or more and then we have zero for this neuron on all of these except the zero zero so maybe this neuron is not even learning anything but actually no it is contributing so if we only have two neurons then we cannot uh, train the neural network, but with three we can because we need to eliminate, like, have this signal as well. Here we can see the, the decision boundary. So when target is one, we have the blue ones, and the neural network successfully placed the decision boundary between uh, these blue ones and red ones that are target zero. You see here, if the first input is 0 and the second input is 1, then target is 1. And if the first input is 1, second is 0, the target is 1 as well. You see, the this is the first input and this is the second input. And we see that these are separated here. But if we just have two hidden neurons, then this doesn't get properly drawn. So it, there is not enough lines to separate this one as well. If we have five hidden neurons, then it is able to approximate this function that separates uh, these targets. You see how all of these different weights, they are starting around zero, but then their value becomes something else. Now we're not normalizing them. We should probably keep them between 0 and 1. But that would maybe mess with the sigmoid, so I'm not sure. So I noticed that there is like 6 of the weights. I'm not sure why I have 3 weights. Or I mean, I have 3 hidden. So I it tried to explain here, but I still don't get it, like why there is 6 of them. It's because we have 2 inputs, and every hidden neuron receives inputs from every input neuron. So three hidden neurons and then weights for both of the inputs to every of the three. And then these are the weights from hidden neurons to the output neurons. So there is just three and one output. The first weight, second weight. So the, the blue is the first, orange second and green third. 
so the output is gonna just combine all of these so weight uh, weight times one neuron weight times second neuron and third weight times third neuron and output so now you see that first of all the blue ones are the input to hidden weights and they are more on the negative more of them are negative and the uh, other thing is hidden to output weights they have more extreme values around maybe because they learned uh, that they are outputting for softmax so they need like huge values to bring softmax to zero or one thank you for watching check out other videos on my channel and see you next time